Hi, on MPI, brought to you by DigiKey, and Adafruit for every single week. Adafruit and DigiKey bring you the latest new product introduction NPIs. This week it is CIT, Relay and Switch. Lady Ada, what is the new product introduction of the week? This week. Okay, this week we are highlighting CIT, which we have not done yet. I always love it when I see a new company. Um, you know, we love all those like standard big codes, but um, I like a company that's also specialized. This one specializes in, as you guessed it, relays and switches. Today we're going to be looking at the L115F series of latching relays. Um, these are really cool because they're extremely high power, chunky relays, but they have latching coils, which are my favorites. Um, so here's the data sheet for this series. Uh, comes in a bunch of different voltages at the bottom there. The contact ratings available 30, 40, 50 amps at 277 um, volt AC. So you can use it with Europe, American, Australian, Japan, Canada, Canada 2, Canada 3, Greenland, the return, um, etc. So it's useful anywhere. Great for switching large amounts of current. Like 50 amps is a lot. Um, and, and AC or uh, DC voltages. Um, so there's a lot of relays available from DigiKey, and we've even covered a bunch of relays um, on INMPI of various types, but we've never covered a latching relay. And the thing about latching relays is cool is if you've ever used a relay, um, you know how they work, they have an electromagnet, you put current through the electromagnet and the contact closes, they're making the, the circuit. But as long, if you want to keep that circuit closed, you have to maintain the current through that electromagnet. And so here, this is a non-latching relay available from CIT. This is the J series, not the L latching series. And you'll see that um, depending on whether you have the 0.9 or 1.5 watt version, you know, at five volts, you're doing like 200 milliamps through there because um, the resistance is only like, you know, 28 or, or 17 volts. So you know, as long as the current is being maintained, you're, you're going to just lose that 200 milliamps um, into heat into that electromagnet. You have to be like, man, like if only there's a way for me to not have to, like I want to activate the relay, but I don't have to maintain that current. Well, that's why you want a latching relay. So the cool thing about these is if you look at <coughs> the top uh, diagram, there's the mechanical diagram bomb, but the top is like a schematic. This is the kind of standard one that's normal open, normal close. It's a 1C footprint. And you see at the bottom, pins 2 and 3 have R and S next to them. And that means set and reset. So you'll notice if you have positive on pin 2 and negative on pin 3, that's reset. So that'll turn it to like the default normally closed and uh, is, is closed. And to set, you put negative on 2 and positive on 3. And that inverted voltage will set it. So that will turn on the relay and activate um, the normally open contact to be closed, um, that's completing your circuit. So what's nice is that after you set or reset, you don't have to keep holding that current. It's only like a one-time thing. Ooh, how handy. So you only need like a couple milliseconds of current. Um, so one thing to note is because you're know, like, wait a minute, I have to have positive and negative, and you still need to have that five volt, like 100, 200 milliamps, maybe 24 volts, you might need an H bridge um, to drive these. So that's kind of the downside is that um, it's much more complicated to use in a normal relay where you just need a single transistor. Here you need you know, either four transistors or you just get like an off-the-shelf H-bridge because you have to treat it sort of like a motor where you're inverting the direction uh, depending on whether you set or reset. So this series comes in a bunch of different configurations, um, SPST or SPDT. So if you don't need a normal open or normal closed contact, you just want one, get the SPST. Contact rating, um, you're going to pay a little bit more for 40 or 50 amps versus 30. Core voltages, pick the voltage that matches you know, the, the power that you have available in your system. You know, if you have 12 volts available, it's better to use that than to like down convert it to five and then use that to control the, the coil voltage. Use the highest voltage you've got. So it's great for automotive or industrial, 12, 24 and 48 volts are available. Um, coil power depending on how um, strong that electromagnet has to be for the 50 amp, you might need the 1.5 watt. And then there's also um, standard and low profile. So this is the 1C footprint. There's actually other footprints available, but this is the one that is um, in stock right now. So you'll see the standards on the left and the low profiles on the right, they have the same exact footprint, but the low profile is just like sunken. Like it doesn't have 
the body go up as high. And so the pins stick at the top and those are the normal open, common and normal clothes. You would use um, your standard spade connectors to get to it. And they're in, stock. they're in stock right now. You can actually pick them up. Um, a really good deal. It's like whatever, five bucks in single quantity, four, four seven, five singles. Um, and it gets lower from there to get a latching relay. If you're doing something that's battery powered, or even if you're like, look, I don't want to waste half a watt whenever I'm activating this relay. Um, it'll also last a little bit longer because you're not like, you know, activating the relay constantly. You only have to turn it on. The plastic latches in place. You let go. It's a little easier, less heat, less wear, less power supply management. Altogether, kind of nice. Good pick this week. Bit of a deep cut from someone we didn't cover yet, CIT. That's right. That's INMPI. INMPI. I on MPI.